conclude this virtual day and after this great introduction to the topic of NFTs, I would like to hand over to Georg Back, who will discuss together with Priyanka Desai, Kevin Abosch, Kenny Schachtel and Annika Meyer, the impact and implications of NFTs at the art market. So George, George made the way up to St. Moritz, so we are just going to switch the camera. So I'm handing over to George and please take over. Thank you, Nicolo. And welcome everybody to this panel. Um, we are going to talk about the art market, the NFT art market. As you mentioned, um, we have um, four guest panelists. I would like to welcome Kevin Abosch, Priyanka Desai, uh, Kenny Schachter, and um, Annika Meyer. And Maybe each of the panelists can give us a short introduction of yourself and uh, a little bit of a background, and then we start uh, with the discussion. Priyanka, would you like to start maybe giving us an introduction of yourself? Yeah, thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Priyanka Desai. Um, I lead operations for a project called Open Law, which puts together uh, a bunch of different decentralized autonomous organizations. I realize that sounds very complicated, but uh, one such decentralized organization is called uh, Flamingo, which basically is a group of collectors and people in the NFT space who've pulled together their capital and co just begun collecting NFTs. Um, so I help with that general operation. And um, just to kind of give you a sense of my background, um, I've been in the space now for about four years. Previous to that, um, you know, studied law, wrote a little bit about blockchain and the law, um, and then spent some time at a startup called R3, an agency here in New York that did some crypto regulation, um, and then previous to that, worked in politics. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And maybe Kevin Abosh. Uh, pleasure, pleasure joining everyone here. Uh, I'm an artist. Uh, I leverage technology and, and various generative methods uh, to make my work, um, my, I, which which more often than not uh, addresses issues around identity and value. Uh, my first works in uh, using blockchain as a method in making art, 2013. Uh, and then I sort of picked up steam again in 2018. So for the last three years, uh, I've been involved uh, in this uh, thing we're calling crypto art and and, and making NFTs from time to time. Thank you, Kevin. Um, how about Annika Meyer? Hi, good evening from Hamburg. I'm a writer and curator, and I've curated the exhibition The Artists is Online together with uh, Berlin-based gallerist Johann König. Um, it was an exhibition in online in the central land, a virtual world based on the blockchain. Um, yeah, that's basically, I guess we're going to speak about that in a few minutes. And last but not least, um, Kenny Schachter, who actually doesn't need an introduction, but please give us a, um, a little insight. Last and least. Um, I've been in the art world for three decades now in excess, and I pretty much wear every hat that you could wear within the art world, including curator, artist. I'm a lecturer at the University of Zurich and New York University and the School of Visual Arts. I write a column for Artnet, which previously in the past was focusing on the art market, mostly auctions and art fairs. And over the past year, I've uh, released a bunch of NFTs for my own personal digital work, and I've written six features on the subject and lectured as well internationally. Okay, thank you very much. So now we we know that the NFT market was um, quite quite a big topic this year. It entered the regular art market through the auction houses, Christie's and Sotheby's, and was one of the main topics also on Clubhouse. And uh, actually, there, there are most of the artists that, that were really becoming famous, like Beeple and CryptoPunks, are one side of the NFT market, but there's also another side. And uh, 
there are some uh, historical artworks which which have been shown in some of the exhibitions like proof of art at francisco carolinum in linz which is actually one of the first uh, shows on, on historical artworks um, in a museum but also um, koenig gallery has uh, launched uh, uh, actually a, a gallery on decentraland in the metaverse and um, has uh, explored a new way of exhibiting with um, Annika Meyer as one of the co-curators. And um, Kenny Schachter has uh, curated breadcrumbs in gallery Na Nagel Draxler, which is uh, still on. So uh, maybe what's, what's very interesting is uh, that, Kenny, you were talking about NFTism. Can you elaborate a little bit uh, about what you mean with ism or is it like a, a movement that you see with nfts well like i said i've been in the art world for three decades and i mean in nft like kevin has been involved for so long with blockchain art and nfts so i would say it's an ism in as much as what is an nft it's really a delivery system for art, not even necessarily solely digital art. It's just the way a new marketplace, which is based on the blockchain and largely in Ethereum right now, and it is the dissemination system for art. However, it really has taken on, it's become a phenomenon unlike anything I've ever seen, amounting what I would say to a revolution in as much as like, I hate the word disrupting, but the whole crypto universe, technology investors, and a younger generation of digital natives have all been exposed to the art world in a totally unconventional and unorthodox manner, the likes of which never existed before. And as a result, because it's such an unfamiliar new phenomenon based on technology, it's caused a lot of um, an uproar, nothing less than in how polemic it is and divisive it is in putting a wedge between the traditional art world and the future of what the art market is going to look like. So the ism for me is really a future model and system upon which is transforming the whole, not just the art market, the collectible market, but it's gonna disrupt the stock market and all forms of ownership in real estate and on and on and on. So I just think the ism aspect refers to this kind of whirlwind of how technology is transforming our daily uh, lives. That's quite, <clears throat> that's quite interesting. Um, actually, uh, we are entering into a totally new space also, like, um, you know, the net metaverse, which is offering us new methods of uh, curating. And um, maybe Annika, you are one of the first curators that has explored this space. Can you tell us about the challenges and how how you um, how you curated your for first show? I mean, curating online isn't isn't that different from curating offline. The good thing is you don't have to deal with transports. <laughs> I guess that's, that's that's the best part of curating online. Uh, you don't have to think about shipping shipping and building crates and so on and on. Um, but Johan Koenig and I, we started doing digital shows, I think now 14 or 16 months ago, but we started working on the digital shows like uh, in 2019 already. You can visit the first digital shows by Koenig Gallery via the app with the same name of the gallery. So Koenig Gallery is the name of the app. Um, yeah, I mean, what interests Johan and myself is to create experiences online uh, when curating online. You can you can do things that are not possible uh, offline, so that makes it a bit more interesting because artists can realize projects they wouldn't be able to do, to do in real life. And yeah, to be honest, I mean, there's, there's basically not much of a difference. Uh, the team is smaller. You don't need 10 art handlers. You have one digital art handler. You need a digital architect. That's uh, for the gallery, Mal Rosner, the artist they're working with and done the first digital solo show with at the gallery. 
So yeah, but you have to keep the same things in mind when you have, I don't know, to tell a story and to think about the concept. And with the artists online, the idea was Johan invited me two years ago to curate a show with him uh, about digital art. And that show was nearly ready. And then the lockdown happened. We were ready to open it. And then we said, because everything was moving online, all the digital stuff. So we said, let's also move online with it. Um, and then we changed the concept of the show um, and decided to show paintings and sculptures, like physical painting and sculptures offline and digital paintings and sculptures online in Decentraland so that it was like a, a round concept. Yeah. There are also quite new uh, ways of um, playing around with NFTs. I mean, we, we see some digital art, like uh, a mixture between physical artworks and digital artworks. There's also um, DAOs which are used or um, some, some kind of um, bounty systems for uh, collectors and, and, um, and the whole uh, community. So uh, what do you think, where, where is this whole art um, medium of NFTs uh, going to go towards? What, what, is, what is it going to look like in the next few years? This is maybe yeah. a question that uh, also Kevin uh, could uh, talk about. Sure. Um, with my, with my uh, last project, 1111, I, I created 1111 NFTs. Um, that uh, uh, I, I'm trying to redefine the relationship, at least within the context of my project, between collector uh, and the art. I think uh, perhaps it's not the collector who collects the art. Maybe it's the art that uh, collects the collector. Um, I think there's something of, a, of a, the potential for a power shift uh, and uh, a way to change this relationship so that over time, um, either the artistic intrinsic value can be amplified, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps the value proposition, uh, the conventional value proposition between a collector and artist and their and their intentions, whether it's to uh, hold on to a work or divest it for some sort of financial game, this can be uh, manipulated uh, by the artist, uh, by the artist itself. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've embedded collective intelligence and uh, uh, in the form of a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, inside the art, also an AI component, um, so that this uh, relationship uh, evolves over time um, uh, in, an, in, a, in a way that uh, the collector could perhaps could not have predicted. Um, uh, and, and so that it, there, there are various... Uh, types of value aside from the, the the monetary value of the artwork and I think if uh, you see that uh, um, increase uh, in some meaningful way uh, then perhaps a collector won't want to divest themselves of the work because they would they'd have a fear of missing out on on the journey the relationship that could take years uh, to play out and, th and I think that's something that's exciting about this technology, which is evolving also over time. The protocol itself is evolving, but the ability for an artist to uh, continue to engage, re-engage uh, with the collector in, uh, in, in sort of uh, exciting ways. Um, I think that's when people ask me about what the future of NFTs is, uh, you know, forget about bubbles and all that, but the future of this technology um, is is uh, is really exciting because it's going to change the relationship between uh, collector and art and artist. This is uh, something that Joseph Boyce already tried to do in the '60s. I think he was kind of uh, trying to involve a society into art or change society and um, change uh, the way that we think. Um, what is have, have you experienced um, that within your project that there were some surprising moments which led your project into something new or, uh, Kevin? Um, yeah, I mean, always, with a simple photograph on a wall even, you, you, I, I'm always surprised at the, the way the, the public at large engages with the work. 
uh, with this because it's a little bit more alive. Um, uh, I'm very close to the work, and 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 there are aspects of it which I'm familiar with, which uh, I, I either don't make. Uh, there's information I don't make available to the public or the collectors, and it's fun uh, to watch them. It's it's almost a childlike reaction. Uh, I'm getting from various collectors when when things happen. I call them activations. Uh, some are planned, some are not so planned. Some are a function of uh, the uh, AI um, uh, deciding when and what happens. But the feedback I'm getting is one of wonderment. It's one of a whimsical sort of uh, you know surprise at times. And and uh, and then of course. I, I wouldn't call it a gamifying of the relationship. Uh, I, I, I don't think that would be fair to say that, but I think there's something akin to the experience of playing a game where the collectors are trying to imagine or guess what might happen next, how this relationship with his art might evolve next. So, uh, you know, I, and, I, and I find that very, very satisfying. It, my work deals so much with, with, with boundaries, the, 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 the boundary between myself and, and the subject uh, and vice versa, and my, the art and the public. And the more these lines can be blurred uh, and, and the, the sense of uh, self uh, and that external to self can be blurred, um, you know, it, it, it gets, I think it's very exciting for all parties involved. So in some way, actually, what you're doing uh, with your artwork, Kevin, is uh, very similar to uh, Flamingo Dao, where um, basically some collectors have pulled together to build one collection. And maybe, uh, Priyanka, you can tell us more about how, how that's, that has been evolved and how, how did you... Um, how does it work, actually? Yeah, sure. Um, and a lot of the reasoning and mechanics behind a lot of what Kevin dove into there makes a ton of sense in many ways. And this might just be due to like flat, uh, flat way the internet works and how easy it is to share information online. But uh, you know, from my vantage point, I feel like NFTs are really about community. Um, and so, I mean, we've been seeing like a bubbling over uh, in the growth of creator communities, even in Web2, meaning like pre-blockchain, like we saw that, you're seeing that uh, in Reddit, Discord, Clubhouse, et cetera. Uh, and DAOs are sort of a natural extension to these web communities. So you have a community. Uh, so Flamingo effectively is one of these web communities. You know, there's weekly calls, there's a Discord channel. Um, the real difference is it's almost like a community with a bank account tied to it where people have pulled together Ethereum, they cut through the noise of the internet, they, um, you know, poke around different projects, they play around in different internet communities. We've, I, I think the Flamingo members have also uh, really actually collected several of Kevin's works as well. Um, so DAOs are like these headless organizations um, where there's just several members um, and, and I would say that Flamingo's objectives really fall into several different buckets of NFTs. So, I mean, this conversation is primarily in the, the digital art realm, but the members of, you know, Flamingo also are heavily focused into collectibles. And depending on your view, I guess collectibles and digital art have a tremendous amount of overlap, um, which is also a fascinating discussion to think about as well. Um, but also, you know, metaverse and like land in different metaverses and virtual worlds. And then really lastly, um, like some gaming, like a lot of NFTs can also be, you know, a, a, a specific asset that sits inside of a video game. Um, so uh, really this is like a collective of about 67 people, some of which are in, from the traditional art world, some of um, whom have been collecting NFTs since really the beginning. Uh, some founders of several large NFT projects. Just it's a the idea is like you have a wide group of people, all from different backgrounds, regions, um, life experiences, and coming together and collecting together, much like other communities that have been built in this ecosystem. So um, that's really at, at like a high level what Flamingo is, and and so far they've collect you know they've launched at the end of September and October, and they've collected thousands of different NFTs at this point. So have you also been showing these NFTs like in an exhibition or or is, is it more like uh, some sort of an investment or what, what is your main approach with the Flamingo DAO? Yeah, so I would say that the members are long-term holders of, of the work. Actually, 
They have not sold anything except for one work they consigned for the Sotheby's auction, which is an auto glyph and a very historic collectible. Um, so outside of that, they've just been really hanging on to the NFTs. What they aim to do is really kind of up to them and done through internal governance. Um, there's a couple interesting, you know, avenues. Like one is they're actually building out a museum in a metaverse, right? Or not a museum, it's like a gallery or, uh, to really showcase some of their works. Um, and, you know, may, may have like a social club and event space appended onto that in the metaverse. So that's a way to really show off the collection and have that for public consumption. Um, you know, there's also some physical spaces that they would, I think, aim to eventually display the works on. Um, what else has been interesting to see emerge is a lot of the members of Flamingo also have been having fun playing with the NFTs once acquiring them. So, for example, there was like a, an alien punk um, that Flamingo acquired in January. Uh, someone created a Twitter avatar for that alien punk. Um, it has its own voice. It has its own, like, even there's thoughts about kind of creating t-shirts around it or any additional swag around it. Um, there's also like this notion of creating like a writer's room to create these narratives around different NFTs and collectibles and, and do some fun mechanics that would include um, a separate community or the Flamingo mem members themselves. So beyond just collecting, it's also being very playful once acquiring them too. So there's definitely a lot of different avenues that the members are taking it. Oh, thanks, that's very interesting. Um, maybe I have another question for um, Kenny. Uh, you are actually uh, curating a lot of exhibitions lately, so one is coming up in London. Um, how, how do you actually select your artists and what is your... Uh, I, I mean, it's very often called uh, somehow NF, NFTism. So I have the feeling that you are kind of also trying to build up uh, a little narrative uh, in your exhibitions. Well, I think Annika summed it up pretty accurately that art, I love art. I make art, I write about art, I teach art, and you can see behind me, I live art. So I don't really differentiate between anything done with uh, intelligence, passion, and love, and emotion. So I don't differentiate between a poster, a print, a painting, a sculpture, an NFT or even a chair or a car for that matter with um, that's done well. So, I mean, I'm reminded because I have a bit of a legal background, the Supreme Court of the United States was adjudicating on the issue of pornography and the chief justice rendered an opinion and he said, I can't describe <laughs> pornography in words, but I know it when I see it. And I mean, I've been in the art world for going on 35 years, and it's a seven day a week lifetimes, uh, lifetime occupation. So connoisseurship and art in general, unlike what most people expect nowadays with this kind of uh, immediate sense of immediate gratification and uh, Instagram foreshortened uh, attention spans that we have, you accrue knowledge and connoisseurship over time. And, what appeals to me in art is, you know, it's a very simple thing where it's an element of how the art of today relates to the art of the past, the art of the present, and how that art will taste, smell, and look in the future, in, as far as you can imagine. So there's no hard and fast criteria. There's a bit of an intuitive, emotional gut reaction to things, but it's all based, like, in a modern car, a computer makes three million decisions every second. And really, in my mind's eye, when I'm approaching art and artists, it's the same sort of process. So it's really just a matter of looking, 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 and reading and reading. And Christopher Wool, who made this poster behind me that says spokesman, he also made a painting that said, the harder you look, the harder you look. And really, that's it. It's just a matter of applying yourself and, uh, and just reaching out to people and reading and, and, you know, going to exhibitions online in the metaverse, looking at all the various platforms which are reproducing like Hydra in the marketplace. There's so many different NFT platforms. Um, I made a joke that everyone and their grandmother are doing them now and ended up 
making an NFT of my grandmother and selling her. But so it's really just reaching out and spreading your tentacles in the universe and taking the temperature of the creative communities that exist worldwide. Now, museums have also started to uh, learn about NFTs. Some have bought their first NFTs. Um, this is maybe a question for everyone. Um, what, what do you think, what are the major challenges for a museum which is, you know, like has another role as, as a collector? What does it take right. to uh, start a collection and... Um, yeah, I mean, at, at the moment, I, I feel that a, a lot of museums are still quite reluctant. I think I think how they're going to hold. I get I get uh, contacted frequently by by institutions who uh, have questions around uh, custodial responsibility and uh, who keeps the private keys on these things and uh just practical issues around uh when you lend work do you actually have to send uh the nft or can you just send the uh, associated content to be displayed you know uh, some people might argue that you're not you don't, you're, you're you haven't actually uh shown the nft if there hasn't been a transfer of the uh the token which i, I think is a bit silly but, but the custodial issues are, are huge and uh i imagine there's already an industry popping up of third party uh custodians so that in case the those with the private keys in the institution die or uh, there's some political issue uh, within the institution that there's there's some reliable third party to make sure that uh, these uh, valuable pieces of artwork potentially valuable pieces of artwork don't uh, don't uh, vanish I can, I can just add a quick thing. I mean, in relationship to what Kevin said before about uh, the art is collecting the collector, in another sense, we're all custodians for art. In a sense, the art will always, we're just lifetime custodians for art as a collector. And there's an ongoing uh, obligation to, to ensure the viability of the art. So I think that really collecting NFTs in a sense is absolutely indistinguishable from collecting video art from the 60s or you know there was loop loop there were real tapes uh via all kinds of various technologies that have grown up obsolete over time but the content remains the same it just has to be upgraded and i mean to make an analogy we're sitting here in 2021 and all of our presentations are being slightly distorted and interrupted <laughs> due to the lack of technological consistency within our own speaking uh, in this in this platform today. So I think in 100 years from now, the phones will be implanted in our foreheads and we'll still be screaming, hello, 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 with a bad connection. So like, I think that collecting an NFT is absolutely no different from owning a painting. Paintings require the same degree of care that collecting technology does. You have to be careful. You need to look to the future. Things change. Technology changes at a great degree of rapidity. And people will always have to be cognizant of how to maintain a continuity to be able to show the art, which is the underlying thing in and of itself, to future generations. Yeah. Now, the major drivers actually are the auction houses so far. Um, do you think the galleries will pick up quite soon, or uh, is it some something uh, like a, a strange situation for a galleries to sell NFTs and uh, physical art? So there is uh, some some sort of a competitive uh, situation there. Whether you see auction houses or the drivers, they're sort of the newcomers, the way from my perspective. I mean, there are galleries that have been uh, presenting and selling NFTs for a while now, and I think they'll they'll continue to be. That's an interesting topic for discussion: is uh, you know whether galleries will uh, would exist in a, in a pure NFT world, uh, as if uh, people suddenly didn't need uh, the service of a gallerist to inform them or to surface new work, help with discovery. I'm I'm I belong on galleries myself. 
uh, I don't think they're going to disappear. Um, and I think the uh, the role of the auction house, the traditional auction house, uh, I think uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see how this this uh, develops. Because just because we have a few landmark sales uh, auctions uh, with fantastic uh, price tags attached to it, doesn't convince me that uh, 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 this this uh, this is this is how collectors are going to collect work uh, of this of this nature of this natively digital uh, nature connected to NFTs I'm, I'm not I'm not certain of that anyway well I think uh, the auction houses have also taken a, an, another shift uh, towards uh, more uh, like historical artworks I mean, I was quite impressed about the um, selection that Sotheby's uh, took uh, at their last uh, auction, and uh, let's let's see how they're going to continue. Um, I don't know. Maybe there are some questions yes, uh, from the audience. Yes. So thank you very much. So first of all, thank you very much to all of you for answering the question from George. So I have a question for Priyanka. I'm new to this space, Rice, and uh, that's also the question here. So how are NFTs, what is a disadvantage for an artist? So we are always talking about that's a new mean of showing and the art and so on, but where is there the, is there also, is there a disadvantage for an artist, uh, artist to that, in regards sure. to that? I sort of missed the question, sorry. So you said, uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Yeah, of course, of course. A little no for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I got here the question, what are the biggest disadvantages for artists when it comes to NFTs? The biggest disadvantages for artists? If I mean, are. I think, yeah, I, I guess it depends um, on the artist, right? I mean, if you're someone who wants to engage with the medium, I think by nature, you know, it, it's a medium that serves uh, digital art pretty well. So, you know, I have seen... Um, um, and this is just by me, I think just the fact that this is an emergent um, kind of medium for digital content in general, both like art and, and media. So I think if you're not necessarily involved in that space, it could be difficult to translate your work into. Um, I guess another one, which, you know, I don't know if I, if I feel this way, but I think, you know, the metaverse is going to be supporting a lot of of, of digital art. So if you're someone who likes to consume art in a physical space, I think that digital art is becoming easier to display in a physical space. I think that there's definitely progress being made on that front. Um, but I also think what's pretty incredible about it is the notion of like putting on Oculus lenses or walking around in the metaverse, mm -hmm. going to a gallery and like actually absorbing digital art in its native state. Um, you know, that's, I think, something that's new and different, and it's a different lens on how to consume art, and I just, I think that that's fascinating, but it's just a little, depending on your viewpoint, it could be a little bit different or unique for the experience. Um, I don't know if I'd call that necessarily uh, dis, a disadvantage, however, I just think it's a, a new medium, um, and observing it as such is, uh, is maybe different for certain people. Yeah, you just need to get to to use to this uh, new opportunity. You would put it like that, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Perfect. And there's very then clever ways yeah, to yes. display that too. Sorry, go ahead. All right. So then I have another question for Annika. Um, it's <laughs> well, I'm reading here uh, the question from the participants. So, what influence has now the Corona situation on the boom of those NFTs, and how is it then for afterwards? If if you can go again to museums or galleries, physical uh, art, I mean, is there any? I tried to put it in the context, right? Because it's just one question. What influence has Corona? So, is there any influence of Corona to the NFT boom or not? Or how do you see also the future if everything goes back to normal? That was that was for Annika, yes. So can you hear me? Yes. Is that a question for me, right? <clears throat> if Corona the the consequences of Corona on the art world or, yes. or if yes, uh, yes, the pandemic influenced the NFT hub for sure. Correct. Uh, if people wouldn't have been at home 
all the time and in front of screens, I don't think that he that we would have had um, that often hype around NFTs and long term consequences. Mm. I guess everything will go back to normal. People love openings. People love going to physical shows. I mean, what I found interesting, I mean, that's at least the case in Germany where, where I'm based and where Kuna Gallery is. So where most of uh, the press somehow reacts or does not react is that uh, people seem to fear that the idea somehow is if you do something with a gallery or a museum online, that your idea is to replace the physical experience in a museum so that people who are working online want to replace museums or galleries, which which is a funny idea. Um, I guess <laughs> no one has, has that in mind. That would be a bit crazy and wouldn't lead anywhere. But I think with NFTs, digital art it will be like with photography and video, you know, there's sculptures, paintings, video photography. Now there's digital art which has been made possible through NFTs because artists can finally sell their work. So I guess um, when it comes to long-term consequences, what's going to happen, I think that's that might already be the case with digital art. Okay. No. Good. Then thank you very much, all of you, for the panel, which gave us many and a better understanding of NFTs and what we can expect to come.